Hi everyone, it's Neve here. Welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm going to be doing an interactive paper cut spread in my Dilutions Art Journal. So I'm starting off prepping all my pages. I'm using the Dina Wakely heavy bodied um, acrylic paint. So starting off with ruby, tangerine, lemon, evergreen, lapis, night, and blackberry violet and just spreading the paint out quite thin just to get an even color of paint I'm using a sponge to do that then I'm going back um, on all the pages I've missed out on um, and painting them with the um, black gesso which dries really matte and dries really quickly once I've done that I'm doing that in each of the pages so when I cut through I'm going to have a black um, background and on the first page I'm painting both pages so I've sort of got an introduction to the, the spread. Now I'm going around with the thin Dina Wakely media tape just to give a bit of a border for where I start cutting just to make sure that I don't cut off the edge and on the very first page I'm using a wider tape just to cover the edge and give me a really nice clear border. Now I'm going in with a very sharp craft knife um, scalpel and just freehanding a design of a tree. You'll notice there's a small journal in front of me. That was my plan that I did. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Just using some rainbow Copic markers just to sort of get my idea of what I was going to do. It was just a really rough idea, um, but it gave me enough of a plan to go through. Now I'm just using a really thin, um, I really thin cutting board. I actually just got one from my local $2 shop and cut it in half so it would fit into my journal. I'm using Dina Wakely stamps to stamp in to give me some depth um, when I've got the finished page together and here I made my first mistake. You notice where I put my rainbow um, to do my red. Now about by the time I get to the yellow I've realized I've made a mistake because I've actually started my rainbow from the bottom rather than from the top. That first cut should have been much higher up in the page to get my red at the very top. For some strange reason, probably because I was doing this later at night, I decided to start at the bottom of my rainbow. So as you can see, I'm constantly flipping backwards and forwards between the two pages I've already cut to see what I need to remove, where the next cut's going to be so it overlaps and it starts building a picture. So it's all about using foreground and background as you're going. Um, and you can see me sort of working out, am I going to cut out the petal leaves, am I going to do anything um, on the inside. I try not to use a pencil to draw lines but in some cases it's good just to know where I can actually cut um, and to make remove all of that. I'm using the uh, Stabilo All Pencil which is a water soluble pencil which if I needed to get rid of anything I can sort of get rid of it quite quickly. As I'm going along I'm removing the media tape from the edges and you can see that's giving me a border as I go along. Um, on this page too, on the yellow page, I didn't put my cutting mat in the right place. This is me working out I've done the rainbow wrong. <laughs> so now I'm going in and cutting the rainbow underneath and realising I'm going to have to change the orange part of the rainbow to the red and the red to the orange. You need to be really careful about where you're putting the cutting board and making sure you're putting it under the right page. I put mine under two pages so I cut through two pages but I was able to fix that. With the media tape that I've put around the edges I am removing it as I go but what I found is the further I went on my journal the longer obviously it took for me to get to those pages the stickier um, the residue was left on the page. So I'd actually use probably a proper painter's tape rather than the media tape or a washi tape that's easier to remove or if you're really really brave you know just do it without. You just saw me put in a moon there I was leaving the top piece of the yellow here for a while because I thought oh maybe I'll put a moon up there until I realized that you're probably not going to have a rainbow at night with the moon so then I removed it. So it, this while I had a slight plan of what I was going to do 
there was a lot of um, intuitive cutting as well. For example, I decided when I got to the green page, well, my tree could have leaves. So I'm making this abstract sort of tree background up the top of the page, just cutting out sort of teardrop shapes uh, to make the leaf shapes um, and removing the excess so you get that sort of leafy pattern and you can see that up the top. When I get to the flowers here, I liked how it was coming through, but I figure that you're probably not going to have green petals on the leaves. So I actually get a few pages together and cut them out so you can see the violet underneath as well. And you can see here I've just ripped off some of the paint. So just going in with my sponge again and repainting over the top removes that really, really well. On the blue page, I decided that I'd build up sort of the sky background. So I've just got the stripes to sort of build up that, the different blues that you can see in the sky. Excuse me. Um, this is where I cut through three pages at once. So I need to change my craft knife because it's starting to get a little bit dull at this stage. And I was cutting through a lot more than I usually would. And the reason I'm cutting through three pages is I want to get through to that violet page in the background. So as you get further into the cut, the less detail obviously you're going to have in your background. So you can see the, the cuts in the background are getting simpler and simpler each time. Obviously because you've got less to look at and less space because you've got all those layers in front. With these um, wavy lines that I've got to I thought that I could use some of those in the background to use for journaling and to journal through, which you'll see on the final violet page. So doing this process is a lot of going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Here you can see me altering the two first bits of the rainbow, so it now makes sense and they go in the, the correct colour. So I had to, on the red page had to add some white so I could get that orange coming back again. So here's where I got to on the first night when I did this. I added some paint pens to the um, stamped images and I did the first page using the lyrics from Somewhere Over the Rainbow and doing some journaling in the background with a white pen. When I was looking at it, I decided I really needed to have some writing in it. And one of the reasons I decided to do this page was my daughter has been listening flat out to a song called Paint a Rainbow in the Sky. And those lyrics have just been going round and round and round in my head, particularly when I was doing this page. So I decided to hand cut those out of the pages so that the colour that's being talked about in the lyric shows through. So for example, um, this one's on a yellow way up high. So when I take out the cutting board, you're going to see the yellow come through. And this really finished the piece to me. While I loved what I'd done before, it just didn't seem quite finished to me. And this just finished it off beautifully. Um, just when I was doing this, so you had, again, you can see me sort of flipping backwards and forwards. You need to be really careful and kind of plan where you're going to put the writing. So you're not going to have a gap um, where you've got some other writing you've done on another page. So you need to make sure you sort of avoid that, which is why the, the writing sort of moves around on the different pages. But I quite like the randomness of that. In this as well, you can sort of see coming to the end, I should have changed my craft blade again because it's starting to get a little bit dull and you can see there's little bits of white coming through. Especially this one because it's quite fine and because I've got the writing on the back page about the violet, I needed to think of somewhere different to put the lyrics. So I actually put it on the top of the rainbow section. Um, and what I do to fix the little bits of white is get my sponge again and just go over it. So it picks up the paint where it's needed. Please excuse my head and my interesting jumper, but where I work is freezing cold. <laughs> I need to have lots of jump layers on. So this is the final piece and I'm just so thrilled with how it went together. Uh, the reason I did this in, to begin with is I've been doing a lot of paper cutting in my journal and one night last week this idea came to me 
in, in my sleep or in my twilight. Obviously, paper cutting and doing my journal has been sitting on my mind. And so I couldn't wait to the next day till my, my girls went to sleep so I could get into this and have a go. And I it really pleased that what I had in my head actually matches what sort of came out on the paper. In fact, it came out better than I was expecting to. So I hope that you really enjoyed this. I know it was really, really quick, but no one needs to sit around and see me cutting out fine details for two hours. I hope you have a go at it too. Paper cutting is so much fun to do and it is wonderful to build up those layers in your work. If you enjoy this, there's some other paper cutting techniques on my video on YouTube, a few flip throughs of my journals so you can get a, a sense of what's happening in my journals. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you again on the channel soon. See you later.